October's been pretty productive. If you are part of my friends or family, please don't watch this video because I've got my elf hat on now. Christmas is coming. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to my channel. If you're not subscribed to this channel, you're gonna to wanna to hit that bell because this is the place to be to take your sewing to the next level. So today I wanna to talk about October makes. So I am making a lot this year. One, we're homebound. Two, we don't have as much disposable income as normal. So uh, Christmas will be a little bit lighter on the budget this year. And I mean, what better way to while away the hours when we can't go outside, we can't go and do the usual things we do. So I want to share with you all the things I've made in October because I have not done that in a super long time. I've not done a makes video and I just think it's kind of fun to sum them up every now and then. Um, I show you a lot of the things um, that I make in other videos so some of this might not be new to you but it was a really prolific month and I'm kind of proud with everything going on that I got as much done as I did. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and start on what I did get done. First of all, I pre-tested the Breckenridge pattern for Love Notions. So my first test version is actually wearable. I actually really like it. It's purple. It's uh, a little roomier than the end product because I kind of made it too big. But, but I really love it. I love purple and it's a great top just to wear around the house. And no, it's not perfect because it was a pre-test fit version, but it's very wearable. So that's fine for me. And then of course I did do my final Breckenridge Henley, which you all saw in another video. So if you'd like to know more about that pattern, you can refer to my last video in which I reviewed both the Breckenridge and the Resolution bottoms. So I made the everyday play dress by Love Notions for my granddaughter, and I love the way this came out. So cute. I also did a video on this, so you've seen it before. But what you haven't seen is the doll version. So I'm doing like an army of tall clothes this year for my granddaughters and grandsons, by the way. Um, but they now have matching dresses for her and her doll. Rather than having labels that scratch them and that, that you end up cutting out anyway, I made paper labels and just pinned them on with ribbon and they just say lovingly made by Grammy. And I'll show you these up close in a picture here. And I just, I love them. And uh, I think this is gonna be a great gift for my littlest granddaughter. Another make was the Resolution Bottoms, which I also reviewed in my latest video. Um, I'll go on and on about those. So I've already said everything I need to say about those in the last video, but they fit wonderful. And uh, I made them into jeggings uh, or jeans with very stretch fabric and I love them. So um, that was another make that I did. And I also made a classic tee in off-white. And this time I put uh, the title of one of my favorite songs and the scripture on there, You Make Me Brave. Because sometimes I need to be reminded of that, that God is the one who makes us brave. So um, I love that shirt and I'm sure you're gonna see me wearing that. <laughs> I mean, rather than buy shirts from Jiffy Shirts or one of the other um, companies that you can buy blank shirts from, why not just make them? The classic tees go together so quickly, and I know it's got to be money saving, especially if you do a lot of them. All right, I'll just show you um, some of my doll clothes so far. I'm going to do a of a summary video of all the doll clothes that I do for my grandkids. Um, when I'm kind of closer to the end, but I will show you. <laughs> this is the School Cool dress pattern by Ellie and Mac. It is a free pattern and so, so adorable. And uh, this is for one of my granddaughters as well. 
So this is two different patterns. This is the uh, trendy t-shirt and that was on um, Pixie Fair for free. This is a circle skirt and all I did for this is to use the bottom of the school cool dress. And then I just put a band on the top, you know, which is just like a neck band. Um, about 10 inches is really good to stay up on an American girl or um, I, my fit model is actually an our generation doll by Target and they're a little bit bigger around than some of the dolls, but um, these should fit any 18 inch doll. Okay. And I also made Anna. This is the school cool dress by Ellie and Mac as well. I made it long and I uh, got the cut files for Anna's designs, both on the skirt and on the chest. Uh, from Etsy and I made a larger version of this as well a ways back and you'll see the picture right here and I think that she's gonna love that I forgot to say too that I made her the cartwheel collection in this same fabric so this is pretty similar to the outfit that I made her as well so much fun I mean doll clothes are just a perfect gift for a little girl if they don't have a doll, take your 40% coupon and go to Hobby Lobby. And you can buy sort of a plainly dressed doll for $24.99 minus your 40% coupon. This was $14.21, I think. So very inexpensive and you can have, you know, it's not an American Girl doll, but honestly, you're going to give it to a three-year-old to play with or a four-year-old or a five-year-old. So um, these are great. Yes, their hair does get messed up. Can you wash it? Yes. And she'll have hours and hours and hours of fun playing. And honestly, I would much rather, I gave my daughter the original American Girl dolls. Basically, she hardly played with them because, you know, they were expensive and, you know, we were always worried about them getting messed up because they were an heirloom. Well, when it comes to her daughters, she, she would rather them play with the Target version or whatever. And so she actually sold those American Girl dolls. So um, I love them though, still. I, I kind of wish she hadn't in a way, but you know, I do see her point that if you're gonna give it to a child, um, it's better to give them something that doesn't cost quite so much so you don't have to be like panicked when they leave it outside <laughs> or something like that. So um, this is going to actually turn into a boy. I'm going to cut the hair and cut the eyelashes because they're kind of curly and make this into a chubby cheek little boy um, for my little redhead. So my grandsons also want dolls so they can play with their sister. So I'm going to make boys for them. <laughs> Should be lots of fun. I have a lot of fun plans with that and I'm going to do a video and show all of that for you. Another doll thing that I did make is this little denim skirt. And this is Simplicity 5733 here. And it has a little denim skirt, um, but it did not have these pockets. So I did add these cute little jeans pockets onto the back. Um, it's got a faux fly and um, it does open and there's Velcro there. And yeah, it's the cutest little thing. And then I also made, I need to make a top to go with that one. And I also made a little Blackwood cardigan. <laughs> I actually drafted this. And this is kind of my fit test, okay? I think it's a little too big for her. And yes, I shouldn't have used white thread on the hem, but it's like really hard to rip out now that um, this is rayon spandex. So ripping it out, I'd have a hole. So I decided to leave it. They're just kids. But um, if I were to do this again, I would not use white thread and I will give her a little uh, SBA, a little small bust adjustment because I put the curves in as if, you know, what we need as ladies, right? And she does not need that because she, the doll does not have boobs. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was fun to do. And I may even share that pattern. I just kind of, uh, know how the adult version is shaped and kind of use that to, uh, draft a pattern. So, 
you know, that in a combination of looking at the sizes of the tops that are for the dolls, I kind of worked out my own pattern. So I could share that probably because I did draft that myself. Um, so if you're interested, let me know and perhaps I'll share it on the Facebook group or something. So the next thing that I did is I made a Sloan and I hacked it into a little um, loose turtleneck with a little pleat in the front. And I've worn that already to church. I love that. Um, this is uh, ITY and it is was solid coral and uh, hard to work with. Uh, I, this, sometimes ITY can be ridiculously hard to work with. It was a little hard to work with, but um, I love the end product. So um, yeah, I've worn this already. So I know I'm gonna wear that a lot of times. My next make was the, uh, this beige turtleneck tee. Um, what I did was I took a classic tee and I just added a tall neckband to it. Um, I made the neckband about, I think, seven or eight inches long so that it would have room to fold over. And it was super simple to do. And I like turtlenecks, so I don't really like them up high, but I didn't want to do it as low as a scoop neck. So I did just lower the crew neck just a tiny, tiny bit so that it would not be up against my neck quite so much because I do feel choked when I have a turtleneck on sometimes. And then the next thing I made, I've also done a video on recently, and that is my Steelers jersey, my game day Steelers jersey. So much fun to do. Basically, that pattern whips out in no time. The most uh, time consuming thing with that garment was cutting all the stripes and letters and whatnot to make it authentic. So um, you can watch that video if you wanna know how I did that. I am going to be sharing a lot of these embellishment things in a video. I'm gonna be doing a video soon on iron-on um, vinyl. And um, I may, I'm looking at possibly um, doing a little more of that because that's another thing that I love to do. And I might share a lot more of those things with you um, possibly looking at starting a second channel with that, but I'll keep you posted on that. Mostly just because I would not want anyone who only wants to hear about sewing and not that. I don't, I wouldn't want them to, you know, think it was turning into that and unsubscribe. So perhaps I'll just do that on another, on another channel completely so that you could go there if you would like to see that. And of course, I'll refer back and forth. I'll say, you know, if you want to see how I did this, you know, go to the uh, cut, Cutting Files channel. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet. Thinking about like instead of Oopsie Daisy, it might be Craftsy Daisy. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, but we'll see. I haven't like done any research to see if that name's already prominent out there or anything like that. So um, yeah, stay tuned for that because it's just a, a weird thing my husband mentioned the other day. I was saying how so many people have emailed me wanting to know how I uh, did the vinyl on the t-shirts and things that I do that I really, you know, definitely want to respond to that and show. However, I know on YouTube, it's not real good for your channel to branch out into other niches um, on the same channel. So I might just kind of take those videos to a second channel so that if you're not interested, you don't have to worry that if you click on something on my channel that that's all you're going to see because I do know that there's a lot of people who that doesn't apply to. They don't own a machine. They don't want to own a machine. They, a couple people said they would never wear a t-shirt with anything on it and that's, you know, we're all different. So that's a, a thought that I have. My husband just casually mentioned that and um, as a joke kind of and I thought, well, Hmm, maybe that's what I should do. So I'm kind of praying about that and thinking about it. Um, it may be that I just show a few things now and then on this channel, but we'll see. Um, it might just warrant its own spot on YouTube. We'll see. So altogether, that made 16 items that I made this month, which is a record for me. And of course, some of them were just little things for dolls, but some of these can be really time consuming depending on 
how this wasn't, but this on the other hand was a little more time consuming. So, um, 16 things. So I thought this is a real good month to do October makes because I was pretty prolific this month. Um, and yeah, it was a fun, this is my happy place this time of year. I turn on the Hallmark movies and just get festive thinking about Christmas. And I'm already in full elf mode up here. So <laughs> I don't know about you, but it's it's time. If you're not sewing for Christmas and you plan to, it's time, ladies. <laughs> get going on that a little bit because um, you think we have all this time and yet we really don't. So and the, the closer we get to Christmas, the busier it gets. So especially if things open up, which I hope, hope, hope they do. But if things open up, um, we're all going to have so many places to go and so many things to see and do that um, we're not going to want to be home all the time. So make use of the time that we're stuck home now <laughs> to get those Christmas things done. So anyway, that is my October makes. I'm going to do my Juki Serger uh, review uh, up, coming up in the next few days. As far as I know, there should not be any reason that I can't do my chat on Sunday with you. My apologies for last week. I just didn't realize it was going to overlap like that. And I have many, many more Christmas things to make ahead of me. So I'll be sharing them with you. And um, I hope that you like kind of watching that journey. If there's anything I can do, uh, any questions I can answer, always feel free to put them in the comments. Um, I love teaching and sharing about sewing. It's my favorite thing in the whole world to do. So have a fantastic day. It's Friday. Have a good weekend. I will see you on Sunday. And in the meantime, God bless you and happy sewing.